It had been raining for two days when Hurricane Bob came into town. And it's, there was so much water that it started to come in through and seep into the basement. It started flooding. And I found my dad down there trying to soak up the water with rags and like squeezing them one by one into the bucket. So I started to help him out. And after a while, I got bored. And so I ran upstairs and I came back down with a drinking straw and stuck it in one of the biggest cracks and it started to flood right into the bucket. Uh, I was 10 years old and my dad is a rocket scientist. <laughs> so I've been a problem solver since I was young and now I'm a construction engineer solving bigger problems in our built environment. And my mission in life is to help people understand and see what green transportation might look like in practice. And I believe that we can fundamentally change the way that roads are built and that we must in order to fight a changing climate. So most of you, when you think about transportation, you probably think about the inconveniences you face on your daily grind. Things like noise, sitting in traffic, the exhaust, how bad all the other drivers are. Maybe you take a different mode of transportation every day. Maybe you're walking or taking the bike or a bus or a train. And that's the bread and butter of transportation, how we get around and move from A to B. And it's really about what's on the surface. There's much more. Transportation also drives our economies. In the US, we spent about $138 billion last year on transportation construction. You might think that that money is going to having you or helping you spend less time sitting in traffic. And it turns out almost 70% of that is going to pavement and construction materials. So as it turns out, your tax dollars are going right into the ground. Roads also have a substantial environmental impact. Research from the University of Washington shows that one lane mile of road uses about as much energy as 100 times your family's annual energy bill. That has a carbon footprint of 250 metric tons per lane per mile. So how many households do you drive to work? Even if you have a zero emissions vehicle in the most tech savvy mobile city, your roads still have a footprint. It worries me that research from the James Cook University in Australia shows that 90% of new roads are being built outside of the United States and developed countries right now. Why in the world would we replicate that business as usual framework? Well, who's ever heard of a road that's being built to improve the environment? What about a road that's designed to reduce its carbon footprint? Wouldn't it be game-changing if we thought about our public investments in that way? Roads can do so much more, and I'm looking forward to showing you exactly what I mean. Roads can reconnect ecosystems. In Orange County, only the bravest mountain lions dared to cross the busy 241 expressway. And since 1998, unfortunately, 10 of them didn't make it. So the toll agency spent time and money building a wildlife fence with a special top so they can't climb over and so that the cougars and other critters can safely go under four brand new underpasses designed especially for them. So now they can cross safely and you can travel there more safely too. Back here in Bothell, Washington, Horse Creek was suffocating underneath the developing suburb. Salmon and other fish had not seen daylight in over 50 years. So when the city had the opportunity to rebuild that, a road downtown, they actually literally picked up the creek, moved it over to the west, and opened it up. And now it's a community centerpiece. Roads can create habitat and restore habitat in unusual and unique ways. In Portland, Oregon, bats have penthouse view and waterfront property underneath the Selwood Bridge. It even has energy efficient mood lighting for those dark and stormy nights. The best part is that the bat boxes 
were designed and built by kids at the local elementary school who insisted that the bats would have free rent. So talk about affordable housing. Meanwhile, in New Zealand, imagine that you are a little lizard like this guy, a copper skink. And one day, humans come to your house, knocking on your door, and saying that they need your house to build a highway. And instead of certain doom, you, your family, and all your friends are taken to a fancy lizard resort on an all-expense-paid trip where you stay in style and as they build the road, and then, even better, they hand you the keys to a new safer house, safe from predators, that is just up the street from where you used to live. In North Carolina, in the summertime, it's either humid or a hurricane. And a first-of-its-kind road in Raleigh was battered by back-to-back-to-back -back -back hurricanes Matthew, Florence, and Michael, and lived to tell the tale. And its story was that it had installed brand new bioswales, also called rain gardens, that are engineered swales designed to capture the water and treat it using the superpowers of natural soil and native vegetation that help remove the pollutants before it gets downstream into the river. When Hurricane Harvey battered Houston, Bagby Street bounced back. It was one of the only streets in Midtown Houston that did not drown. It had a secret underneath the road. In addition to rain gardens, there were a system of huge pipes that helped, like a pressure valve, release, relieve the pressure from all the water in neighboring um, areas. And it drained into the bayou back where it belonged. What if roads could actually treat and capture water themselves? In Auburn, Washington, they installed something called porous pavement. And you can think of porous pavement or permeable pavement like a Rice Krispie treat of roads. Yum, right? Uh, so the asphalt and, or cement, can, which is like marshmallows, can mix together with small rocks. Are you still with me? Rice Krispies? Rice Krispies? <laughs> Uh, to create a sturdy structure that you can drive, bike, or walk on. And when it rains, water filters through the gaps and underneath into the soil below and recharges the groundwater table. Roads are recyclable and can also cut waste. What in the world would you do if you had 400 toilets? One city engineer had the brilliant idea of putting the potties in the pavement. A local nonprofit was replacing 400 toilets and called the Public Works Department in Bellingham. And the local engineer got together with the concrete company and crushed up the potties as an aggregate material to replace the concrete and the rocks going into a sidewalk. So it's about 20% recycled potties. And there's now a bike trail in Bellingham made with over 80 tons of recycled toilets. Down in San Jose, California, El Camino Real at Monterey Highway was notorious in the state of California as the noisiest and worst road in the state. And the politicians were hearing about it. Enter the maintenance crews to save the day. They paved over that, all of those potholes with a asphalt pavement made of recycled rubber tires ending up in a smoother, quieter ride. They also reused 97% of the existing road, saving 23% of the cost. On a two mile long project, that's enough money to pave another half mile somewhere else in the city. Meanwhile, next door in Campbell, California, they put their 90 foot wide two way pavement swimming pool on a diet. And they transformed it into a complete street with wide sidewalks, bike lanes, transit stops, and also used an interesting paving method called full depth reclamation, which crushes up the existing road and replaces it as new. They saved about $2 million and reduced the carbon footprint by 33%. Roads can reconnect communities and economies. As traffic races through the grass-covered tunnels that now 
form the Presidio Parkway, you and your family can walk and have a, gen a gentle stroll between Chrissy Field and the Presidio. The new tunnels also reduce noise in sensitive areas like the Tennessee Hollow Watershed and the National Cemetery. They also opened up views for the iconic Golden Gate Bridge. Back here in Seattle, one of my favorite parts of the Mercer Street project in downtown is that it was built on contaminated land from an old gas station. And if you go underneath the road, there's a system of pipes and rocks that help the soil breathe called a soil vapor extraction system. Additionally, the surplus property on this job actually recently sold for $143 million in our high-tech corridor downtown. This almost paid for the entire cost of the new corridor. East 40th Street in Tacoma, Washington was recently named the world's greenest road. It treated 37 acres of nearby neighborhoods for stormwater. That's more than six times the size of the street itself. They also added a new shared use path and in partnership with the local schools for a public art project, tried to tell a story of what happens when it rains. They used a special coating to paint poetry into the pavement, adding a little beauty and fun. We are building the transportation infrastructure of tomorrow today. These are just a few examples of what roads can do when it comes to sustainability. So imagine if we replicated these examples instead of replicating business as usual. We need a global road revolution. That means rethinking the ways we design, build, and buy our transportation infrastructure, from streets and highways to bridges, runways, rails, and trails. So if we want to connect our communities, we need roads that revitalize them, that create a sense of belonging and ownership, so we stop taking them for granted. If we want to protect our ecosystems, we need roads that are restorative, that preserve and protect animals and plants, that clean the water, and that enhance our connection with nature. If we want to invest in the future and maybe save a little money, we need to design roads that are long-lasting, resilient, materials efficient, and designed with the end in mind. And if we'd like to protect our economies from the financial uncertainties of climate change, we need to be measuring and managing that carbon and energy footprint on each and every last mile when it gets put into the ground. So how are we gonna do that? We need the private sector and industry to keep innovating and create green technologies, products, and services that will take us into the next generation of roads and come to market. We need educators to inspire students of all ages that, and then show them that sustainability isn't rocket science. And we need policymakers to challenge the status quo and put the environment first into transportation policies and plans. And if we really want to get serious about it, put them into construction specifications, funding criteria, and capital budgets, because those are our tax dollars building and putting people to work, building our infrastructure of tomorrow. It's time to raise our expectations of what sustainability can look like in roads. The opportunities to take action are right in front of our eyes. You've seen it. And now that you believe that we can fundamentally change the way we build our roads, the first step starts with you. Expecting the roads in your community to be built green and beautiful and beyond business as usual. And if you can do that, I'm confident that we can do right by the environment and future generations, one mile at a time. Thank you.